Yo guys, it is me, Tommy Ronnie 123 back again, back again, this time defending tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe if you are new. I'll, I'll be bringing out tips that basically no pro or YouTuber will tell you about because it covers their secrets. I will be going into such depth on defending that you will come out being the most pro defender of all time without any of that nonsense rat behavior where you're sitting back and that's it. And I don't want to hear that. None of this sitting back, guys. This is not the way to defend. The only way you learn to defend is by going at people. Um... But what I'm going to tell you guys is obviously if you are new, yes, I am X verified. You know, FIFA 20, I reached phase two, knockout, ah, uh, close to the tournament in Atlanta. FIFA 21, uh, 97th in Europe uh, in the first qualifiers, but then I quit because I love YouTube and I love helping you people. That's the passion. That's why I'm here. Um, obviously, we'll be covering certain things today, guys. The defending is so convoluted. I need a few videos to do this, and I mean videos upon videos. And even then, I'll probably find something else to talk about. It is so convoluted, but I want to get through every scenario I can, everything I can to help you guys get up to the elite divisions. Now, most importantly, practice is the you know the key here. If you practice these things, then you'll get better at them, even if it's a bit difficult at the start, guys. Every one of us had to go through the same path. No one's different, guys. Let's get straight into it. What are we talking about today? First of all, we're going to talk about the settings. Some settings are very important for you to establish. Second of all, we're talking about understanding the game. We'll look at the pitch. We'll look at what's happening. What's important to know about the pitch when you're defending. Perfect. Um, then we're going to go into jockeying. Then we're going to go into right stick switching. Second man press. And lastly, covering through balls, guys. The basics, the most important basics of the game. So these are like the beginner basics kind of tutorials. But it helps everyone because you might learn something new from me that you wouldn't have heard before. Actual experience of playing at the top. Um, so yeah, guys, look. Let's get straight into it. Yes, guys, so the setting part is very, very important. You need to make sure some of these settings are how I set them, guys. So going into a next player, switch indicator is going to be off. I'll talk to you about this when we do right stick switching. Um, the reason for this is because I want you guys to focus on getting good at switching just with the right stick, guys, not with the left bumper or the L1 on PlayStation. That's not going to make you a good player. You need to be switching. So taking this off means you won't be forced to do that. Pass block assistance needs to be on because it's FIFA and you need your players to help you out as much as possible. Air balls, loose balls, obviously guys, this is going to be the thing for auto switching. You don't want to do it, you know, in any other way. I think that's the best way to have it because then, you know, these are the impossible ones to switch to basically. Low auto switch and move assistant. Basically, the reason for this is um, when you are trying to track a run such as a through ball, and you switch to that player, you want him to not run in that direction for too long after that because sometimes you need to quickly change direction. A lot of people quickly do skills as soon as they get on the ball. You want to make sure you can adapt to that. Directional clearance, just because you need to, you know, when you're clearing, you want it to be directional. You want it to be in the direction you're, you're facing, obviously. Um, icon switch and turn, turn it off. I'm not even going to answer that because no one actually uses that. Right stick switch needs to be player relative, so the player you are controlling, the right stick switch will basically be from them it's the best way of playing ball relative would not work because it's but depending on the ball and the ball will move constantly so that will make it completely impossible meanwhile player rotation god knows what that is like i literally don't know what that is no one uses it believe it or not it's just useless and analog sprint off guys um that should be it for the defending. Now, one of the most important things that a lot of people don't realize is you need to understand the game, understand the pitch, and understand what is going on on it. Um, so there are a lot of danger zones, as I like to call them. You guys should be able to see them, you know. And we'll be talking about these danger zones um, because I think it's very, very important when you're defending to understand this. A lot of people won't tell you this. A lot of YouTubers won't cover this. I'll be covering lots of things in my guides in the next few months which a lot of YouTubers and pros will never, never cover with you because they don't want the secrets to be exposed. But the truth is, every single pro knows there's three different danger zones. Now, I like to indicate them like this, guys. First, we'll talk about the first one. The first one is the middle of the park. Now, this is important because this is where you're most likely going to be, well, defeated, right? The, the middle of the park. Everyone knows that football is one in the midfield. You want to make sure that the midfield is absolutely perfect. You do not take your players out. Your centre-backs are not taken out all the time. You want to make sure that the midfield is as solid as possible. And you want to use your midfielders for as long as possible to track runs and to take the ball back. That is the most important thing. As soon as they get defeated and the ball goes behind the third line, you're screwed pretty much because then you're forced to defend with your centre backs and that obviously means you take them out of position, leaving gaps in behind. The second danger zone that I like to talk about uh, in terms of danger, because the first one you can still kind of get away with it because obviously you saw your centre backs. Second one is a bit more dangerous, is down the wing guys and I'm going to be honest with you, this is so so dangerous. People don't realise how tough this is to defend. When you defend down the line, 
people are going to obviously be going for the cutback. Now, you know this will happen, but this is EA Sports in the game. It means it doesn't matter what you know. You're not getting the ball back if, you, if EA is not on your side. You want to avoid the opponent getting into those areas where they can cross from, but you know they'll be basically cutting in. Even them passing back into the walls of midfield gives them a lot of space in the box to open up your defense. So you want to make sure that danger zone, you're alert to it and you do what is needed to defeat it. I will be doing a video on defeating these danger zones and what to do in every single scenario, so don't worry about that. And obviously the first and most important danger zone right outside the box. I'm not going to say inside the box because I think that's so obvious and people know that that's the danger zone, but right outside the box is super, super difficult to defend. People are very good at skill moves. People are incredible at quick left stick dribbling, which I'll be doing a tutorial on, don't worry, because that's my speciality. People are very, very good at it, and you get a lot more stressed because you know that you're in danger if they get past your defender. So this is where the composure needs to be absolutely top class, but you guys need to understand this to be able to be more composed and know how to deal with these situations. Let's move on to the first part, guys. First part, guys, that we need to talk about is jockeying. Jockeying is using the left trigger on the Xbox or using the L2 button on the PlayStation. Now, when you hold it down, your player will get into this kind of focus mode, focusing directly um, on your opponent. Now, now, a lot of people you'll see cheating at the moment because there's a glitch where you can use this kind of assisted jockey which kind of aimbots themselves onto the player. This will not teach you to be better. This will get patched eventually. Do not bother, guys. Use the manual jockeying move in a competitive mode because this is exactly how you need to learn how to play the game. Now, in jockeying, what's so good about it? Well, you're more in control of the player. Yes, you can sprint jockey, obviously, with, if you hold down the sprint button, the right trigger, or the R2 at the same time, which is something you need to learn, and I'll probably do a proper video on sprint jockey because it's a completely different skill but this is the thing with jockeying if someone's going to be running towards you or you're in those danger zones that i like to mention guys if you're facing someone that's going to be running in from the wing or you're facing someone that's right outside the box you need to get into that jockey button and back away from them a bit guys back away now the number one rule i have to teach you here is your primary aim is not to tackle. Now, this sounds super, super controversial, but it is not. It is to force the opponent into going into you or you cutting off a passing lane. You can cut off passing lanes easier with jockeys in that middle area that I mentioned because what it allows you to do is be more in control of your player. In terms of when you're defending outside the box and cutting in and all of those kind of situations, what the jockey gives you is allows you to back off and get yourself in position right in front of the player you think the ball's going to or in front of the uh, skill moves that the player will be doing so make sure guys to put the left trigger or l2 jockey into action everywhere around those areas just get used to using it as much as you can don't sprint guys in those situations straight at the player back off let them go towards you and then get the ball from them this will also mean that when they do skill move suddenly it means that you won't get tricked because you won't be too close to the player allowing you to react quickly move left or right and defend that guys next guys right stick switching now this is the probably the most important thing i'll talk about today just because not enough this kind of links to everything you know this can this is one of the most important skills you can have in the game and i mentioned this before covering through balls because you need right stick switching to do that right stick switching basically means that you're using the right stick on the controller right here that one that you do skills with to switch players rather than the lb or l1 button on the playstation this is so important guys pro players will never 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 use the le that left bumper l1 never and i'll tell you why it's unreliable it switches randomly at times and they can uh, in instantly switch to someone else as you're about to switch to that button that you think is gonna you know it's gonna switch to that player or whatever doesn't work guys get used to right stick switching i know this can take time to learn everyone had to learn it everyone had to learn it you're not the only ones but guys right stick switching is probably the best investment you can make in terms of learning a feature or a skill in the game because what allows you to do then is just switch constantly between players when someone wants to switch sides you can get all the way to the other end instantly and put pressure on them it also means outside the box you can quickly switch and get the ball back it is so, so important, right stick switching. It does not get more important than that. And I just think, you know, if you if you don't cover right stick switching, it's not a defending tutorial. It's as simple as. So now, guys, second man pressing. Now, second man pressing is very interesting. It is back this year. It's been a while since this has been uh, a good feature that is usable in FIFA. And I think it really required to be back because it allows you to press a lot better. And it does require skill. Now, what happens, guys, is you have the right bumper or R1 on the PlayStation. And you can use this button to summon another player for a certain time. There's like a time period. I think it's five to eight seconds. 
uh, you should see it over the head. As soon as you hold that button, you see it over one player's head. They go green. That green is running out slowly. After that happens, they don't press anymore until there's a cooldown period. Now... What this allows you to do is basically get another player to press from one of the sides and then get the ball a lot better. And what it means, and you'll be seeing a great clip, I actually have an incredible, incredible clip of me completely closing out all passing lanes for the opponent for 100 years. Because whatever he did, there was another man pressing him. And I kept letting go to get a cooldown, then I went back to it and so on, guys. Obviously, that is very, very advanced technique. It's not something you will learn the first time round, but it's about playing around with the right second man press, seeing what works for you. So Sometimes you need to let go, especially do let go, especially if you see the player pass completely away from where your second man pressing. Because what this means is you can switch who is pressing that player. You will not be able to do that if you just hold on. It won't just randomly switch you. You need to let go of the button, go again when, it touch, when it's near another player so that it switches the, the uh, marker for you. Now, what's so important about this is when you do it, you can let go at times, switch to that player and then tackle from that side. It is such a great uh, skill to learn. It just allows you to do so many, so many different things. And I think at the end of the game, what it means is it's a winner. It gets you wins in those situations where you don't expect it. It allows you to get the ball back in places you wouldn't expect it. And most of all, it also forces your opponent into mistakes because you put more pressure on them. So keep using it, guys. And obviously, look at the clips again and have a little look over how I use it. I let go at times. Then I go to it again. Then I let go. Stuff like that. Then I switch to that player um, that's got the marker because I can tackle with them. Brilliant skill move. It allows you to do so much. Lastly, guys, we are going to be talking about... Through balls, the number one way to score. It's my favorite way of scoring in foot champs, and I'll say this. No one defends them properly. Uh, it's been a while since I've faced anyone that defends them properly. Maybe because this year I'm not competing. Um, but pro players do defend them properly. And it is very, very difficult when you don't have a through ball as an option. Imagine not having through ball as an option all game. It basically cuts out most of the FIFA... Um, well... The FIFA attacking options. But, guys, here we go. With the through ball, this is the most important thing. Um... You, it's just so dangerous and difficult to mark at times, especially down the wing. You need to know when to cut it off and when you need to accept the loss, basically. When, you know, I need to just mitigate the circumstances, especially down the wing, where it's so difficult to get your wing back in a position to block it off. It just is. Even if you jockey perfectly, you right stick switch at the right time, everything is just so hard. And sometimes I like switching to the centre back to run behind that wing back because I know that centre back will get there before him, especially since he has that area, extra area to, uh, that he doesn't have to cover that the left back or right back would have to but most importantly with them right stick switching right stick switch to the player which is going to be the best at defending that through ball then back off or sprint towards that direction and as soon as you're close to the ball make sure you hold left trigger or l2 jockey towards it shield the ball go around you know an easy way to go around is just the ball roll guys it's just the right stick left right and you can ball roll away from the opposition and then you can easily um, obviously continue your attack. Through balls is one of the best way of obviously, uh, you know, scoring. So you want to make sure that you completely cut it off. And I mean this every single time. Stop opening up spaces for people. Cover the through ball before you try and tackle. Don't try and tackle. Now, you can block through balls and that is very, very effective. But this is more of an advanced technique, guys. So I'll leave that for a bit later. Pros know how to do it. You need to be able to know exactly where to stand to block it. It's a bit difficult and sometimes it doesn't work because EA Sports in the game. You know how things are. But at the end of the day, guys, once again, a technique which will allow you to be a better player and it will allow you to do things even more um, efficiently on the pitch. Now, guys, I hope you enjoyed this defending tutorial. I'll be bringing out more. Make sure to comment down below what kind of features you want me to cover. I'll be covering as much as I can for all of you amazing people. And obviously, guys, until next time, peace.